Today, I'm going to do what I think, for very personal and sentimental reasons, is one of the coolest builds I've ever done on the channel. I'm going to use the main board for my framework laptop to build a completely new, extremely compact computer. And by extremely compact, it'll be smaller than this and look very, very similar. Let's do this. Hey guys, welcome to Elevated Systems. I'm your host CJ and some of you are aware that I set out to do what I'm doing today over a week ago and ran into a complication. I outlined the problem on my last video, which I've since taken down. I was gonna recap that here. I actually just did, but thanks to the magic of video editing, I'm gonna cut all of that out and drop it into a separate unlisted video that I'll link in the description below for those who are interested and care. But because the vast majority of viewers don't, now we're just gonna get into this build. So let's go over the plan of action. Today, I'm gonna take this i7 1165G7 version mainboard from my framework laptop get all the measurements I need, design a sleek and slim enclosure for it in Fusion 360, print it out on my 3D printer, and here it is. I know that was fast, but we got a lot to go through today. Now, because of the 200 millimeter build plate on my Anycube Omega S, I had to split the model and print it in two pieces, which actually works out because first, 3D printing a plastic case for this motherboard with a CPU that can hit 100 degrees Celsius, which is above the melting point for PLA, is just for prototyping, not for a long-term or permanent use. I'll go over what the permanent solution is at the end of the video, but because the heat from the maiden board can cause the plastic case to warp or shrink and expand, I made a few design choices to compensate. First, the two pieces just clip together. I'm not gonna glue or fasten them together in any other way, so the case has a joint to shrink and expand across, so it doesn't crush the board. Also, there's a bit of wiggle room in the expansion bays, so if the case warps some, it won't put too much strain on the internal port. Finally, instead of extracting out exact screw holes to mount the case, I just added these five millimeter diameter standoffs in roughly the center of the mounting position. Some of my measurements were a bit off, like 0.5 millimeters or less, so not a big deal and easily fixable in Fusion. So to install the board, first I have it set in and I'm gonna slide in my expansion cards to make sure the board is properly placed within the case. Now that I know the board is positioned correctly, I'll use my soldering iron with the needle tip and I'll just mark where the center of the mounting position is. All right, now that that's marked, I can remove the board. And because using a drill to drill out the standoff will probably just shear off the standoff, I'm just going to use a drill bit to melt a screw hole into the standoff. Now I can screw the board in, but before I do, I have this cover that I just cut from a sheet of 22 gauge steel. I did this out in my garage and I apologize, but the footage disappeared from my phone somehow, but it was fairly easy. I just marked the dimensions, cut it to size with my jigsaw with a metal cutting blade and a straight edge guide. Then I sprayed it matte black. So now I just need to make some marks for the mounting screws to attach it to the case and attach a visa mount. So let me get that done. Okay, now I just need to do the same thing, mark the stand off and melt in some screw holes. 
Now I'm gonna use these little paper washers and I'm gonna screw these in loosely again so the board has some wiggle room. All right, board secure. Let's go ahead and put the cover on. And there it is. Again, if this was a permanent solution, I would typically melt knurled brass threaded inserts into those plastic standoffs. But this will work as a prototype and this is as far as I was gonna go with this design today. I was just gonna print out a visa mount, attach this to the back of one of my 4K Samsung 27 inch displays. This display works great because the stock stand doesn't use the visa mount. Plug in a wireless mouse and keyboard and demo a great second life for the framework mainboard for when the time comes. But then a viewer noted in one of my community posts that the main board looks about the same size as a 60% keyboard. So maybe a modern Commodore 64 type build. Zach, you read my mind, but I was thinking 10 keyless. I have actually been on the lookout for a good 10 keyless mechanical PCB and plate for a future build, but it just so happens I have on hand a 60% PCB with a 61 key plate, a box of Gateron blue switches, and just a cheap key cap set. So huge thanks to Zach. This is actually stuff I was gonna use to teach my son how to build a mechanical keyboard, but I decided to go 10 keyless for him and hot swappable because all 61 switches are gonna have to be soldered in yay but that'll be kind of nostalgic because the very first thing i ever soldered was replacing a blown capacitor in my commodore 64 when i was like nine or ten years old but first we need to design a case for the mechanical keyboard part of the build which will mount directly to the top of this so some considerations first i want it to be as thin as possible the PCB has underglow RGB and I have some clear PLA. So I want to incorporate a design that'll highlight that feature, but there is no under key RGB on the top of the PCB and these keycaps aren't shine through. So the underglow will be the only RGB effect. So I'm thinking a dual layer print. The bottom part of the keyboard case that will be under the PCB will be transparent or really translucent once it's printed. And the top will be the same black filament as the main board case. That way, when the keyboard is mounted to the PC, just a thin middle section will be lit up. So to the drawing board. And for time's sake, I won't take you through the entire design process, just highlight the key points. I started with a simple sketch to match the inside dimensions of the main board tray and extruded it to a depth of 17 millimeters. I further extruded out a nine millimeter deep section to the outer dimensions of the case. This is the middle RGB strip, if you will. Hollowed the case out for the keyboard, added standoffs to secure the PCB, a window to pass the USB cable down to the PC, and rather than do a two filament print, I designed some border pieces to precisely frame in the keyboard when it's installed. I added feet to raise the keyboard up about five degrees and allow for ventilation. And finally, so I can turn the computer on, I added a simple mechanical power switch and everything got printed. And here it is. So again, I had to split the print, but assembly is pretty simple. I'm also not going to glue these things together, but if I was, that's what these recesses in here are for. I can cut some more of my 22 gauge steel into two pieces, exactly those dimensions, and epoxy it into place. And if I polish it up first, I can reflect some of the underlighting. Now, I went with this frame design on here to make it look more mechanical, and maybe because I was staring at my Keychron the whole time, but like the Keychron, I'm gonna screw the frame onto the case. So let me drill and tap those holes. All right, now let's make sure it fits all together. There 
There we go. So far, so good. Now the fun part. I have 61 switches to solder to this PCB. I'll be right back. I haven't had that much fun since my undergrad ECE labs, but I do have a problem. I ordered a set of cheap plate mount stabilizers and apparently what arrived was snap-in stabilizers, which essentially are just screw-in stabs with plastic clips that clip into the screw hole. Unfortunately, the only other set of stabs I have on hand are screw-in, neither of which will work on this plate. I just ordered the correct stabilizers. Unfortunately, they won't be here for a couple days, so I'll just have to drive on with some floppy keys, unfortunately. But let me go ahead and get this thing positioned and screwed down into place. All right, now it's just the keycaps. And if I did everything right, the case and frame should j extend just past the bottom of the app. Right there, yeah, that looks good. All right, let's get these keycaps on. Okay, I think I did it. I have some floppy keys. I need to make some adjustments where the keys are a little too close to this top frame. But now I have to flash the firmware to make sure everything's working. Okay, that was fairly successful. Final assembly time, but let me point out a few things because not everything is perfect or as the plan. The standoffs here sit too close to the edge of the case and therefore are underneath this wall of the keyboard case. Now, if I had realized that in the design phase, I could have notched out a space to get the screw in there. As it stands, I could drill that out, but again, it's just a prototype, so I made the changes in Fusion, and I'll just use some mounting tape to attach the two parts. I'm, again, it's a prototype. That's also how I'll attach the feet. And finally, the 90 to 90 degree USB-C cable I got for this is just too big despite the cutout I added for it. So unfortunately, I'm improvising here. Okay, let's get everything hooked up. Got HDMI here for my display. I got USB-A, just a dongle for a mouse. And finally, I have a 100 watt power supply. And let's see if my power button works. Oh, I hear it. And it's success. I don't see my RGB lights in here, but I am sitting in a bright studio, so that could be the case. Or the fact that my USB-C is not plugged in. Well, there's problems. Troubleshooting time, troubleshooting complete. And for some reason, although this USB-C to USB-C cable worked fine when I tested it on my workstation, it doesn't work on the framework USB-C port, possibly because the USB-C on my workstation is just a 3.1 Gen 1 port. To get it to work here, I needed a USB-C to USB-A cable, and the only one I have is like six feet long. So I went from the planned hidden internal cable to this ugly mess. Also, the RGB isn't working now. Hopefully I can get that fixed before I shoot the B-roll, but you guys should know that by now if that's the case. Other than that, everything works except this bracket key right here. I missed one of the solder points. Hey, one out of 120 ain't too bad. I'll get it when I install the stabilizers when they get here, but 
ultimately, if I continue development of this system, I'll be going with a much better keyboard PCB. This was just the one I had on hand. Okay, and now I know it's still kind of a rough draft with the print layers all undressed and the seams. Obviously, if this was a permanent device, I'd fill the seams, filler primer and sand till smooth and give it a really nice paint job. But even so, I think it looks pretty sick considering it's a fully functional desktop computer disguised as a mechanical keyboard. I love the overall design. It has both a retro feel as well as a very industrial aesthetic and the 60% keyboard form factor is awesome and you can see why the battery wouldn't work here you can't put it under the main board because of well, ventilation and you can't put it on top of the board because well this tiger lake cpu will really warm it up it's not good to cook a lithium ion battery i'm also not sure about all the ports on the sides it would probably make sense to have at least two expansion ports for power and display on the back and two on the sides, maybe one on each side. You have to use the width anyway due to the dimensions of the keyboard, but adding expansion bays to the back would make it that much deeper. However, I was also thinking if it was deeper, I could position the keyboard farther back and use the extra space on the front for a palm rest or keep the extra depth in the rear and incorporate something like this USB hub into the chassis so I would have Ethernet, SD readers, and even an NVMe expansion bay. Honestly, I have too many ideas flooding my brain, but what do you guys think? Should I just continue to refine this as is, or should I make some more significant adjustments or do all the ideas, which is an option, I guess. Let me know in the comments, but before you go, let me explain how this goes from a prototype to a permanent home for the main board. Now that I have all the precise measurements, I can take the CAD file to a CNC shop and have it machined out of aluminum. What I would actually do with the case is have the whole thing machined from aluminum, except for the expansion ports. I can cut those out and then use 3D printed inserts pretty much the same way the laptop chassis does. The aluminum can also be much thinner, so the expansion cards will be flush not recessed like they are here due to the three millimeter case walls. I can also have the keyboard case machined from clear or frosted acrylic and the top frame from aluminum. Now, I had a shop in town that could do this for me, but because of the past year, they really don't do one-offs anymore, or at least for the time being. However, there are places online. I've used Zometry before and they've done a good job with pretty quick turnaround. They can even finish the parts for me. Again, let me know what you think. If there's enough interest, I'll send the plans off to be machined. If not, I'll move on to the next project. I don't know, but I know I'll be back next week with something else. So be sure to hit that subscribe and like buttons. And I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, stay safe.